Thank you so much for the invitation to be with you today as together we face up to the critical task of recovering, rebalancing and revitalising. I don't need to tell this audience how important our financial and related professional services are. You know the figures very well. Over 10% of our economic output, employing more than 2 million people, and most of those people actually working outside London. Those figures, impressive as they are, only tell half the story, because of course the success of our financial services are measured not in their size, but in the outcomes they deliver. The loan to a small business, so it can invest in new equipment, helping a startup to go public and access capital so it can grow and take on new staff, enabling millions of workers to plan for their retirement and putting people's savings to work by backing the companies and the technologies of the future. Those outcomes can only be delivered by a well-functioning financial services sector. And my goodness, we need you to deliver them this year. We've been mired in the deepest recession for 300 years. The deepest recession, now we know from this Monday, in the G7, with over a million people having lost their jobs since the start of the pandemic. Last quarter, we saw the highest level of redundancies on record, worse even than at the peak of the global financial crisis. To emerge from this downturn, we need everybody, governments, workers, businesses, and the financial system that supports them, all pulling together. And politicians have to keep up their end of that bargain. Failures in the UK to get a grip on the health crisis and chopping and changing on economic policy have left our country more badly hit by the pandemic than others. I know from speaking to businesses up and down the country that they've been crying out for certainty, for a strategy to see us through until the spring. Instead, we've had four iterations of the winter econ economy plan in just six weeks, each one changing the circumstances in which businesses are expected to operate. By the time we received the final version of the Chancellor's plan, we'd already passed the deadline for workers to be served redundancy notices. The Prime Minister told us that furlough was going to be extended just five hours before the end of that scheme. Banks were given a matter of days to adjust their systems and allow companies to top up their bounce back loans. And the ill-designed job retention bonus scheme was scrapped when many firms had already factored that money into their planning at a time when cash flow is desperately tight. I was brought up alongside small business and financial services. My father ran his own accountancy firm. I know how flexible businesses have to be from day to day, but they need to have at least some constants to plan, especially when faced with the challenges of coronavirus for their staff, for demand for their goods and services, and for their ability to open in the first place. The last thing they need piled on top of those existing uncertainties is uncertainty about the policy response. The result is needless anxiety and stress in the midst of already challenging times and in the worst cases, jobs and businesses gone to the wall. Next week, the Chancellor has the opportunity to provide more certainty with his one year spending review. We in Labour are clear about what we need to see from that statement and from the government's economic policy more generally. We're calling for government to take three steps to a better, more secure economic future to recover jobs, retrain workers and rebuild business. To recover jobs, we want to see government bringing forward £30 billion of capital spending in the next 18 months, laying the foundations for our recovery. Public funding invested wisely in the green technologies of the future, from offshore wind to electric vehicles, has been estimated to have the potential to support 400,000 jobs. We also need an ambitious plan to retrain workers with an emergency programme to equip those who've lost their jobs with the skills they need for the future. As things stand, most of the government's training initiatives, at least for the over 25s, aren't due to come online until April of next year. 
by which point many people will have been unemployed for a whole year. That's too long to wait. And we need to see government doing more to rebuild business. We're calling for the creation of a new national investment bank, bringing us in line with other countries and maximising both public and private sector finance to fuel the recovery. Rebuilding business also requires a plan for those firms that will emerge from this crisis shouldering substantial debt. The City UK's recapitalisation group has done really important work setting out the scale of that challenge. Even before this second lockdown, it amounted to potentially £100 billion of unsustainable debt, £35 billion of which arises from government-backed loans. We've not heard enough about how this problem will be tackled, despite the City UK having come forward with a range of possible solutions. We can't afford for the Chancellor to leave this to the last minute again. Above all, we need a much longer term approach to securing a strong future for our financial and related professional services. A lack of long term thinking has led to a patchwork of different measures rather than a proper strategy for one of this country's most important sectors. And we've seen this over the last few weeks. The financial services bill introduced at the same time as a fundamental review of the future regulatory framework. So the two exercises feel utterly disconnected from each other. And then, half an hour before that financial services bill gets its second reading, a statement setting out a whole host of other policies. Where is the joined up thinking? We need a vision for the post-COVID, post-Brexit British economy and the place of finance within it. And we need a strategy for our future relationship with the EU. Initial grand plans for an ambitious deal seem to have been watered down time and again. Philip Hammond promised that financial services would form part of the EU-UK free trade deal, calling out the sceptics who said it couldn't be done and aiming for something much more than the bare bones of equivalence. Sajid Javid abandoned the aim of a chapter in a free trade deal, although he did promise that in his words, achieving equivalence on day one should not be complicated. Now, we have a unilateral offer of equivalence to the EU with very, very little in return. Instead, we need a relationship between business and government of partnership based on trust. Over recent years, governments have come to expect less and less of business and businesses have come to expect less and less of government in return. I want to rebuild that trust and that partnership. We can and should expect more of one another. I want to work with you to lay the foundations for a better, more secure future beyond the current crisis. From my side, that means a commitment to long-term planning, to a stable operating environment geared towards allowing businesses to grow, to employ more staff and to invest for a sustainable future. To working together on the shared challenges of our time, not least sustainability. To a financial and related professional services sector which is open to the rest of the world with high and dependable legal and professional standards. I'm very proud of the fact that London topped the Global Green Finance Index earlier this year. The recent commitment to a green sovereign bond and improved disclosures were steps in the right direction. But we've known ever since the Stern report that the scale of the climate crisis means we should be going much further, much faster, especially since we're hosting COP26 next year. That means firms ditching the greenwash and acting as the best already have to rapidly decarbonise their operations and press hard for those they invest in to do the same. It means not turning the other way when complex supply chains make the task of identifying carbon outputs hard, but not impossible. And it also means governments walking the walk, not just talking the talk, putting an end to the six billion pounds in UK export finance that has gone to fossil fuel projects over the last decade making sure that every single budget line 
is tested against whether it promotes the goal of net zero or hinders it. And using public money wisely, with strong financial management to deliver the resilient public services, security and sustainable economy that we would all benefit from. A partnership between government and business requires commitments from both sides. I started by saying we should measure the success of the finance sector, not purely in terms of its size, but in terms of the outcomes that it delivers. We know what happens when financial services firms lose sight of those outcomes. When the sector turns inwards and starts talking to itself rather than the people it exists to serve. What happens when risks are collectivised but rewards go to those who eschew responsibility? We can't allow that to continue. That's why Labour will always want to work with the sector to establish high standards and responsible finance. Capital put to work so it builds the businesses of the future. Businesses providing decent work, helping us transition away from carbon and paying their fair share of tax. Your sector has played a vital role in this crisis. We now all need to work together to lay the foundations for recovery. I believe that will only happen if we, policymakers, workers and businesses, offer more to each other than we have in recent years and expect more from one another in return. Thank you.